Hello, my name is Mazharul Hussain and I am a doctoral candidate and graduate research assistant at the University of Memphis. Today my teammate Thomas Watson and I will present our paper Building Indoor Point Cloud Datasets with Object Generation for Public Safety, where we will talk about our effort to build rich interior hazard maps for first responders. Firefighter deaths and casualties occur during to navigation difficulties in smoky environments. According to the National Fire Protection Association, in 2018, 64 firefighters and 3,500 people lost their lives and 15,200 people were injured in, in building fires. One of the most disheartening facts about firefighter fatalities is how close to an exit the firefighters were found, sometimes less than a mere 10 feet away. High quality 3D maps are a possible technological solution to reduce these sort of tragedies. LiDAR sensors can be used to create these maps the maps with hazards and other items of interest to the first responders labeled could be used to navigate the structure and quickly find important objects during a crisis event. As part of federally sponsored program, we have been working with the city of Memphis, Tennessee, USA to use LiDAR and other sensing technologies along with machine learning to build georeferenced RGB point cloud with our point levels. Our contributions are as listed. First, we document the challenges we encountered in data collection and processing, which may be of interest to researchers in the related fields, such as building information modeling, LiDAR design, machine learning, and public safety. Second, we describe our complete 3D mapping and labeling system for building environments, including sensors and data collection processes. And a data processing workflow consisting of data fusion, automatic labeling of hazards and other objects within the data, clustering, cleaning, stitching, and georeferencing. Third, we use a case study to illustrate our process and show preliminary results. We looked at other labeled 3D datasets, such as ShapeNet Part and Stanford 2D 3DS. ShapeNet Part focuses on 3D object segmentation and consists of 32,000 meshes in 16 categories, such as bag, mug, table, and chair. Stanford 2D 3DS provides annotated indoor spaces in a number of different modalities, including RGBD images with normals and 3D meshes, along with per pixel and per point labels. While these datasets contain a variety of indoor objects, they do not contain most of the public safety objects needed for our annotation, such as fire alarms and exit signs. They are thus not directly useful to our work. We investigated ways of labeling point clouds, such as PointNet and PointNet++. These feature two sub-networks, one for classification and another for segmentation. We experimented with PointNet++ at the beginning of our work, but found that many objects were too small for it to properly segment and classify. Thus, we were motivated to use images to detect and annotate the objects, and then to transfer these annotations to the point clouds to obtain per-point labels. We then needed a way to annotate the, the objects and images. Faster RCNN is a deep convolutional neural network for object detection. Combined with the Inception ResNet V2 or ResNet 101 feature extractors, we obtained good detection accuracy in a reasonable execution time. Because we needed per point labels, the rectangular bounding box provided by faster RCNN was insufficient. We instead used mask RCNN, which provides a polygon mask to tightly bound an object. We have surveyed seven facilities with 1.86 million square feet of indoor space that are of interest to public safety agencies. All the buildings are located in Memphis. Some of the buildings, like the Pink Palace, 
have undergone many renovations which make it difficult for first responders to obtain accurate drawings. Some buildings, like the Memphis Central Library, have historical artifacts and important documents to protect. Others, such as the Liberty Bowl and Wilder Tower, have a large number of occupants to evacuate in the case of an emergency. From the requirements collected from first responders and other stakeholders, we have identified 30 high-priority objects which we label in our point clouds. These include objects potentially dangerous to first responders, like hazardous materials and utility shutoffs, items important for navigation through the building like doors, windows, and elevators, and items important for monitoring and responding to a crisis, like fire extinguishers, fire alarms, sprinklers, and emergency lighting. This diagram illustrates an overview of our approach. We use our scanner to capture LiDAR data and image data. We run the image data through a machine learning algorithm to produce the annotations. We combine the annotated image data with the LiDAR data using a SLAM algorithm to build the map and a data fusion algorithm to apply the color and annotations from the image data. This gives us our raw point cloud. We then perform clustering and manual cleaning to remove incorrect labels and poor quality data. Finally, because we scan each room separately, we stitch all the scans into a complete building, then use GPS measurements to geo-reference the final point cloud. To develop our scanning hardware, we modified the Green Valley International Lie Backpack 50 to add an Insta360 Pro 2 camera. The camera, like the LiDAR, captures 360 degree images. The user wears the backpack on which the camera and LiDAR are mounted, then controls the backpack with a tablet held in their hand. The tablet also displays the in-progress scan so the user can evaluate it for issues while scanning. We additionally use the Reach RS Plus GPS receiver, which is not shown here, to measure coordinates on the building to perform geo-referencing. When we do our data collection, we first plan a route to walk through the space. Because the backpack is not designed for indoor use, it can be confused and generate slam errors by, for example, crossing previously scanned paths or walking through doors. Additionally, because the LiDAR is high on the user's back and the vertical field of view is poor, we plan to walk as far away from walls as possible. We also remove humans from the space because they show up duplicated as they move around. Once the plan is decided, the operator walks through the area accordingly and uses the tablet to start and stop the backpack recording. The camera records 3840 by 1920 pixel echo rectangular video at 30 fps, and the backpack records IMU and LiDAR data. Once data collection is complete, these recordings are downloaded from the backpack and camera for offline fusion. To annotate public safety objects, we first needed to create a public safety object dataset. We looked through the videos we took during scanning and found good quality images of our priority objects. We then used the Label Me tool to manually draw polygons around each object in the images, as illustrated in the above figure. We then trained Mask RCNN on this dataset to detect our objects. Mask RCNN is applied to the echo rectangular video frames to generate object annotations for data fusion. To perform the fusion of the color images with the LiDAR point clouds, we rely on the fact that the LiDAR and camera are rigidly fixed relative to each other. This makes calculating the correspondence between a particular LiDAR point and image pixel simple because the transformation is already known. However, this requires that the LiDAR point and image be captured at the same time because the system constantly moves as the wearer walks. We found that producing good quality coloring required less than a 20th of a second difference between the times, which was difficult to enforce. To perform rough time alignment, we used the timestamps of the backpack and camera. These were inaccurate and difficult to set, however, so we frequently resorted to pointing the camera at the backpack's clock and reading the times off the video to correct these timestamps. For fine alignment, we correlate the IMU data of the backpack and camera as they both move together. When this fails, which is approximately 10% of the time, we then fix it manually. Because we labeled the image pixels, we can theoretically fuse them along with the color. However, this is not entirely possible because of the implied mapping of 2D labels onto 3D objects. The first problem we encountered is objects with holes. For example, an area of the image labeled window contains the window frame, but it also contains the window panes through which other non-window objects are visible, as shown in the top image. To avoid falsely labeling those objects, we find the point closest to the scanner in each object, 
then only give points within half a meter of it the object's label, as shown in the middle image. The foreground wall was removed. We also remove labels with low confidence to further clean the cloud, as shown in the bottom image. Red low confidence points are gone, and just the window remains. Another problem we encountered is the fact that each object in the point cloud is built up from dozens of captures from different viewpoints and distances, not all of which may have been successfully labeled. To fill in those objects, we expand the labels. For each unlabeled point, we look for a point with a label less than 50 millimeters away and transfer the label over if found. This ensures all the points of an object are labeled. We have identified several uses for the maps we have made. First, we can visualize them in VR, which makes identifying issues significantly easier. VR also enables us to clearly and quickly demonstrate our results to stakeholders. One of the demonstrations we have used is a VR exploration of the Rosa Parks exhibition at the National Civil Rights Museum. Shown below is our scan of the bus Rosa Parks was arrested in back in 1955. Our maps can enable pre-incident planning, as first responders can understand the layout of the building to help determine escape routes and locations of hazardous objects. Our maps can also be a part of training simulations. By overlaying digital effects such as smoke and fire, first responders can train in a virtual environment instead of needing to set up and burn down a real one. Finally, paired with indoor localization technology, our maps can be used during an incident by first responders inside a building in order to navigate and by first responders outside to understand the situation. Now we will discuss our case study. We chose the Hickory Hill Community Center building in Memphis because while it is the smallest building we scan, it still poses several challenges because of its diverse structure. It has a swimming pool, two-level basketball court, fitness center, many small office spaces, and several mechanical rooms. To support our analysis, we walked through the building after scanning to create a complete ground truth of priority objects we outlined previously. We report the mean average precision if averaged over 10 different intersections over union threshold levels starting from 0.5 and increasing in steps of 0.05 up to 0.95 and on 30 categories. Intersection over IOU measures how much our predicted boundary overlaps with the ground truth boundary. It is a ratio between intersection and union of both boundary areas. The mean average recall is also averaged over 10 different IOU threshold levels on 30 categories given one detection per image. We studied the effect of transfer learning versus from scratch learning using both MS Coco and our priority object dataset. Using a model pre-trained on MS Coco then performing additional training on the priority objects produced much better performance in less epochs than training a network from the scratch using our only priority dataset. We studied the effect that adding new examples to our priority dataset has on training performance. We found that adding more images from a single building increases training performance. To improve performance further, we select candidate images with lower performance so that the network can learn gaps in its knowledge. However, there is a limit because too many may cause overfitting and the additional images may not contain much new information. Thus, carefully curating examples with underperforming objects is more important for further performance tuning down the road. We tested the effect of different image positions on the performance of the neural networks. As the equirectangle position severely distorts the image at the edges, we initially decided to use the cube map projection. Initially, the cube map projection performed better. However, as we added 
more and more equirectangular training examples, the MAP performance of the equirectangular position, purple and the blue curves started to perform visibly better than that of the cube map projection, orange and the green curves, regardless of the DNN, as shown in the first figure. The MAR is much closer for both projections and DNNs, as shown in the second figure. We choose the equirectangular projection because of better MAP performance and the faster inference as it only has to deal with one image instead of six. We tested both the Inception ResNet V2 and ResNet 101 detectors on the MASK RCNN network. As we found that the Inception ResNet V2 performed slightly better, we started using this model. However, the result is not strong enough to declare a winner. Thus, we currently apply both models on the video frames and get the joint result. To perform an end-to-end -end evaluation, we looked at the point clouds before and after cleaning process, identified the objects in them and compared them with the objects we collected during our ground truth work. The precision column is the ratio between the number of true detections and the total number of detections. The recall is the percentage of objects correctly detected from the ground truth. The F1 metric integrates both precision and recall. We are using image instance segmentation model. The model has problem with detecting multiple classes and makes mistakes in detecting some categories. These errors carries over to the point cloud. There are thousands of video frames and each object is annotated many times from different angles and distances, which increases the chance of mislabeling, thus increases the number of false positives. However, this also helps improve the chance of detecting an object correctly at least one of the frame, thus improves recall. The fusion process also adds some errors to the point cloud. Overall, the F1 matrix is good to understand the impact of false positive and false negative for visually distinct objects of a reasonable size. However, the smoke detector and fire alarm switches, for example, are very small, so they end up with only a few points. On the other hand, elevator, door, building entrance all look similar. Only a human would identify the difference by context. To conclude, we have developed a complete system to collect and annotate indoor point clouds with 30 types of public safety relevant objects. We overcame data collection and processing challenges by combining existing approaches with our own methods. Despite our limited training dataset, our annotation performance is encouraging. We plan to improve the annotation performance by increasing the number of annotated objects that are lacking in both our dataset and public datasets and by improving the recognition of smaller objects. Finally, we plan to explore direct annotation of the point cloud combined with our current image annotation pipeline to further improve the accuracy. This work was performed under the Financial Assistant Award from the U.S. Department of Commerce, National Institute of Standards and Technology. For any query, please contact Dr. Len Wang, Professor and Chair, Department of Computer Science, University of Memphis, Tennessee, USA. Her email ID is shown in the slide. That's the end of my slides. I'm here to answer any queries. Thank you.